right now on Justice. The fact is that this race is not over. The road to a comeback. Our path is Florida, Ohio, Iowa, North Carolina. You add Nevada there, you protect Arizona and Georgia. The Trump campaign lays out a path to the White House and says early voting is looking good for the GOP. This as the Democrats insist they're not busy counting their chickens. Are you looking past 270 electoral votes? We're not taking anything for granted. Plus, Donald Trump's contract with America. And it begins with bringing honesty, accountability, and change to Washington, D.C. How realistic is his first 100 days pledge to voters? We have an all-star lineup on deck to break it down. Justice starts now. Breaking tonight, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton wrap evening rallies in critical battleground states. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle in for Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Now, Mr. Trump speaking to a crowd in Naples, Florida, as most polls show him trailing in the all-important Sunshine State. At about the same time, Hillary Clinton rallied supporters in another key and close state, North Carolina. We have an all-star group of guests tonight standing by, including Donald Trump's son, Eric, Dr. Ben Carson, and Haran. Aldo Rivera, but let's begin by hearing from the candidates. I stood next to Donald Trump in three debates for four and a half hours. I think that proves I have the stamina to be president. Hillary Clinton's foreign policy has squandered trillions of American wealth overseas. Yet for all the money spent, all Clinton delivered was death destruction and terrorism all over the world. And joining me now, the executive vice president of the Trump Organization and the son of Donald J. Trump, Eric Trump. Eric, thanks for being hey, with us tonight. Right. You're just fantastic. So your father's so busy. Every time yeah. I look up at the screen, he's in another state. He's yeah. working hard, campaigning. He's had a huge weekend yeah. for sure, especially with this contract for America. So he's in Florida now. Yeah. This is a key, important state. It's integral to the success to take the yeah. Oval, to take the White House. Yeah. How do you feel that you, you're doing there now, yeah. the momentum? because he was there today hitting it hard. First of all, I love the man. I mean, the energy he has is unbelievable. I mean, he's got more energy than a person I know, including friends of mine my age. I mean, the guy's all over the place. He's in Florida. He's in North Carolina. He's in Ohio. He's in, you know, Las Vegas. I mean, he's everywhere. I mean, he's just everywhere. The guy's incredible. But listen, I feel great. You know, I feel really, really good about it. And I see it on the ground, right? I, I probably drove through Ohio. I probably did 500 miles in Ohio two days ago. And I couldn't go 500 yards without seeing another massive Trump lawn sign. I mean, it, it's really incredible. I mean, there's, it's a movement. It's not a campaign. It's, it's a movement. And you see the love on the ground. I'll have a rally. And I'll have 500,000 people in there. And I'm not a candidate. I'm a total civilian in this process. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of enthusiasm that there is on the ground for this whole thing is, is incredible. And people want somebody from outside of government. People are sick of our politicians. They're all talk, no action. They get nothing done. They haven't accomplished anything. You look at the state of our country. It's a total mess. You know, they want somebody, they want an outsider, and, you know, they want somebody who speaks their language, and that's what my father does. And accountability in Washington, one of my favorite phrases that uh, your team uses is, you know, drain the swamp. Like, get out the bad guys in Washington, D.C., the corrupt politicians, and bring in somebody that actually wants to, you know, good, uh, do good deals and be responsible to the people, not beholden to special interests. Do you think that message has been resonating well, and have you seen that in terms of the feedback and some of your internal polling? Well, listen, I, I certainly hope so. And I, again, I, you know, I said, I joked a second ago that I'm a civilian in this process. And I have to say, taking kind of a front row seat to this whole thing, I'm disgusted by how corrupt Washington, D.C. is. It's, it's horrible. The amount of money these politicians make, the amount of money that the special interests make, the amount of money that the special interests can raise for a candidate, and you're seeing that with Hillary's mm -hmm. campaign, the amount of money that, that she's raising. Why are they doing that? They're not doing that because they love a person's personality or that they're charming. They're doing that because they get things in return for it. And look at the problems we have as a nation, right? We have $20 trillion worth of debt. It's gone up $11 trillion under Obama, $20 trillion worth of debt. We have an educational system that's a total nightmare in this country. It's ranked 30th in the world. Reading comprehension is 34th. Math skills is 37th. We have a depleted military. We, median income in this country hasn't gone up in 15 years. People are making less money today than they were 15 years ago. Obamacare is a total disaster. We've lost all of our manufacturing, 70,000 factories we've lost in the last 15 years from this nation. I mean, what are our politicians doing for us? I mean, what, what are they doing for us? They're, they're impeding small businesses. 
You know, they're not fixing any of the problems we have. Sure. They're spending trillions and trillions of dollars. I mean, we've spent six trillion dollars in the Middle East fighting wars. And every time you turn on the paper, you know, the, yeah. the news, look what's happening in Syria and Libya and Absolutely. Iraq and all these places. And it's exporting uh, jobs and production and manufacturing and money, essentially, uh, out of the country. Awesome. But let's talk about this contract with America, your father, that he made and gave a tremendous speech going over the things that he, sp he specified that he wants to do the first hundred days in office. Uh, you know, how much planning thought went into that? Some people said, listen, it was fantastic. They love it. They've been dying to hear these type of yeah. things. They would have liked to have heard it. Uh, sooner, earlier on in the campaign, sometime around September. What, what are your yeah. thoughts on it? Well, listen, I, I, first of all, I was so proud of him as a son watching that. I mean, I think he, he absolutely nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. And I love how we, quite frankly, started about anti-corruption measures. You know, we're going to make sure any person who is in the White House can never lobby on behalf of a foreign government because you see the problems. I mean, you see this whole $12 million deal with, with sure. Hillary, where, uh, you know, foreign contract ahead of Morocco, the King of Morocco is giving, you know, Hillary... $12 million to come to a country. I mean, you see this dirty, dirty money. You see all the problems with these lobbies. You see the corruption firsthand that's in Washington, D.C. And I love how we started there. But then his message is, you know, the, the all-American message that everybody wants. We want jobs in this country. Mm -hmm. Hillary campaigned in New York State for Senate on the promise that she was going to bring 200,000 jobs to upstate New York. She didn't bring a single job. She, in fact, by the time she got out of the Senate in New York State, upstate New York had lost an additional 8,000 jobs. Now she's going around saying that she's going to create 10 million new jobs. If she couldn't create a single job in New York, how is she going to create 10 million jobs for this country? So my father's going to get the strongest mili military that this country has ever seen. He's going to create jobs. He's going to bring back manufacturing. He's going to lower taxes for every single citizen of this country because we're the highest tax people in the world. He's going to fix Obamacare. I mean, premiums under Obamacare have gone crazy. He's going to fix that. He's going to stop drugs pouring over the border. He's going to take care of our immigration problem. He's going to appoint great conservative Supreme Court justices. I mean, he's, and he's going to actually do it. The We've made those promises and specified these things. And, you know, there's been some ups and downs in the campaign. But it seems that every time that uh, there might be a problem or something that comes forward, he's able to bounce back. How do you feel right now tonight as we sit here yeah. with just a couple weeks left uh, until the country decides? Yeah. How do you feel your chances are, especially with some of the polls, some of the key battleground sure. states that you guys are trailing? Well, listen, clearly I'm biased, right? I mean, I could never say I'm, I'm not biased, but I do feel tremendous love and tremendous energy and something that has blown me away, meaning the, the enthusiasm on the ground is just incredible. And I'm not seeing it on the other side. I'm just, I'm not seeing the enthusiasm on the other side. Every single day here from, from Democrats, you know, I've, I've been a Democrat my entire life. And myself and my entire family is going to vote for your father. I hear mm -hmm. from union members who come out and say, listen, we've been unions for a long time. We've never voted Republican. Um, you, you know, we're all coming out for you. And I hear from other people who say, listen, I'm ashamed to say this, Eric, but I haven't voted in 50 years. I've never voted before, and I'm coming out for your right. father. So I see those. Then you see the L.A. Times poll. You see the... So the daily know. tracking polls, that, and like IBD, you guys tend to be doing pretty well in it in the campaign. I uh, think IBD, that's why. IBD, which is the most yeah. accurate poll in the last election cycle, and we're up two points in that. L.A. Times, we, we've got a great lead. I, I don't know. I feel, I feel really, really, really good. And, um, you know, listen, the mainstream media will put us down. They always do. They jump to conclusions. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. I mean, we're, we're running against, he's running against the greatest political machine in the history of the world. Right. Unlimited super PAC money. I mean, just unlimited money. Um, you know, dirty politics. You see these videos that have come out and the WikiLeaks sure. and everything that's happening. We're Does that bother you guys at all? Well, sometimes you feel like none of this sticks, no matter how much corruption gets thrown up against the wall, exposed in that campaign. And I, I, does it resonate? I, I hope it bothers everybody because, honestly, I think it's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, I really do. When you have a paid DNC operative, one of the top people who had been to the White House 340 times, mm -hmm. and he's on hidden camera bragging about how he incited riots in Chicago, I don't know how a person like that's not in jail. I mean... And, and you know what, Kimberly, for, for my generation, I'm 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 an old millennial, right? No one in my generation wants to go into politics right. because they see this the nonsense. Dirty business. And and it's it's so so sad. I mean, these people are worse than anybody can can ever imagine and I can tell you my father will clean up the system. All right. Well, he certainly has the uh, stamina. We appreciate you being here yeah, with us thank tonight. Thank you so much Always for everything. Always a pleasure. All right. Now, joining me now, former Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump surrogate and neurosurgeon Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, thanks for joining us tonight. So we, as we heard, Donald pleasure. Trump laid out key plans for his first 100 days in office. And I was just discussing it with Eric Trump, his son. What did you think of that contract with America? 
Well, I think it was a very good idea for him to do that, uh, particularly at, at this stage, because as you know, people tend to have short memories. And uh, people have been asking for some specifics, and he, he, he came out with some. I think at this time, it's particularly important to emphasize the amount of corruption that's going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, even before the WikiLeaks things came out, we knew that there was an enormous amount of corruption. And it was one of the things that, that I was most uh, surprised by when I was running, the depth of corruption. And it's on both sides. So this election is not really so much about Republicans versus Democrats as it is the political establishment and the media versus the people. And I believe that the people are actually a lot smarter than the political class thinks they are. And they're taking all of this in. And when they go into those voting booths, they're going to be thinking about their children and their grandchildren and asking themselves, do we really want to put somebody who is extraordinarily dishonest in there, somebody who treats other people like absolute dirt? Is, is that the example that we want? And what will that lead to? And I think people, the American people, are much smarter than anybody thinks they are. Now, what do you think, Dr. Carson, about, you know, the polling? Because one day you're up, one day you're down. We talked about the tracking, the L.A. Times, IBD polling, different from some of the other polling that's done in some of the battleground states. What's your level of concern tonight? Well, you know, it's fluctuated a lot. The, the, the electorate is quite volatile at this point. And uh, one of the things you have to look at with these polls is who are they polling? Um, you, know, the, you know, IBD... Uh, and the LA Times, uh, Rasmussen, they have a tendency to try to even out the people. Whereas some of these other polls, five, six, seven, eight, nine percent difference in, in favor of Democrats, you know, that's, that's not accurate polling. This is people trying to manipulate opinions and make people think this is all over and, you know, join the bandwagon. Again, people, the media for it has really exposed itself during these last few months. I think you have to be pretty dense not to believe that they are totally in the tank for Hillary. And you've seen this from the inside out, uh, you know, obviously campaigning for Donald Trump, but this is someone that you campaigned against in the beginning. You've seen some of the dirty tricks that happened while you were in those primaries. There's a tough battle there with 17 candidates. And now you see this information about corruption being exposed and WikiLeaks and videos from Project Veritas. Are you surprised at all, Dr. Carson, that some of this hasn't resonated more with people or, in fact, with the mainstream media? Well, I think it, it probably is resonating silently. Recognize that the mainstream media is barely touching the stories about WikiLeaks. And some people, you know, don't look at Fox News. So they don't actually, actually know what's going on. And, uh, you know, if you look at some of the other networks, particularly CNN, uh, you get a completely uh, divergent view. And uh, you would think that Hillary Clinton was, uh, you know, the second coming. Right. Uh, so obviously, <laughs> you know, it depends on what you're looking at and, and who your groups are, who you're talking to. But I do believe that the vast majority of Americans actually have common sense and they're thinking about their children. And they know that if we don't do something about the debt, that their children will have no future. They know that if we don't do something about immigration, there, there won't be any identity in this country. And on, on it goes, you know, dealing with terrorism, dealing with education, dealing with the prison system. You know, you can't just go on talking about it like the traditional politicians have done. And Hillary Clinton is the epitome of traditional politicians. And she certainly had enough time to be able to do things and accomplish great things for the country, and that's an argument that your, your whole team has been making. Dr. Carson, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, and tonight was the same. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly. And joining me now, my buddy, Fox News senior correspondent, the one, the only, Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> so well, let's Thank talk you. a little I'm bit. Pleasure. There's a lot to go over tonight, but the contract with America, what were your thoughts about that? Because a lot of people said, wow, this is good stuff, like when Newt Gingrich did it, but why didn't it come sooner? 
Well, I, I think that that timing is, is part of it. I also wish he didn't bring in the fact that he was going to sue the women who are lying, allegedly lying about him and sexual assaults at the same venue, you know, almost uh, hallowed, it is obviously hallowed, uh, hallowed ground for America. I wish he didn't go there. Uh, but f- let me just say... Just uh, delivered it clean and... Uh, uh, parenthetically, I agree totally with Eric and I'm so the family is so deeply impressive. They are the trust. Yeah. Uh, that his father has the most independent fatigable energy of any 70 year old in the history of the planet the way he just keeps on fighting keeps on going and really <laughs> yeah. uh, despite despite the polls and I, I, another parenthesis the abc poll that came out today was devastatingly mm-hmm. bad mm-hmm. for mr trump it shows him down in 11 plus points now going to what dr carson another very impressive person uh, said there is no doubt but there is a skewing in the abc poll they do survey more democrats than republicans so maybe the headline is not quite as alarming as it, as it seems. What's the impact of that when people see that out there and there's such a wide disparity in so many of these polls, it's tough to know what to think or to believe. And depending on which polls uh, some of these networks want to put forward, you only hear about some of it. Well, I think that, for example, the ABC poll is seen by people who watch ABC, tens of millions of people, lots of people. Not network. so many people see Rasmussen mm-hmm. or, Reuters, or the other or IBD. Uh, Reuters, IBD, uh, even the, the LA Times. Times, which is an enthusiast enthusiasm poll Mm -hmm. uh, shows them tied. So I think he's in dire straits. Going back to the 100 points, he did things in today's speech that I think he should have done earlier. For example, talking about tax cuts and regulatory reform. That's what Republicans, that's what uh, not just conservatives, but moderates want to hear. They want to hear about tax cuts. They want to hear about regulatory reform. Uh, He also talked about trade. He talked about, uh, you know, the need for school choice, some of the social issues that I thought were also powerful for for the base. But I, I think that it is impossible to ignore the fact that the the background noise for this part of the campaign, at least the you know for two weeks out, has been and probably will continue to be the sex assaults and the and the character attacks on Donald Trump. And it really is a kind of election between who do you like, you know, you know, most least. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think Hillary Clinton is the second most unpopular politician in the country tonight, but Donald Trump is the most unpopular politician in but the why country. Why aren't the tonight. other networks covering all the scandal yeah, things coming? Excellent- from the WikiLeaks. Why did they give Bill Clinton, you know, different treatment? And then now they're putting such focus and attention in terms of minutes devoted to the stories, really harboring on this as if there's some kind of vendetta or agenda against uh, Trump and his supporters. I, when I when I see Donald Trump, this Energizer Bunny, I think that he wakes up every day knowing that 20 of the best investigative reporters in the country working for the Washington Post are assigned to find dirt on him every day. Every day, the best investigative reporters at the New York Times are assigned to find dirt on Donald. He wakes up to that every day. Now, we talk in general terms, almost stereotypically, about the mainstream media and its bias. Mm -hmm. But I have never, in my half century of doing this, seen actual proof. When you look at the New York Times headline, like the headline about the Gettysburg Address, uh, he talks about his uh, 100 day in office. Uh, and then he says he's going to sue the women in parentheses. You know, that's the headline. It's unheard of to see the the fact part of the newspaper it, really become the editorial You're an page. attorney, but isn't it okay to want to defend yourself if you're saying you're innocent of something? And that's what he's saying. He's saying that these allegations against me are untrue, they're false, they're done to try to discredit the movement, the people that believe in me, the supporters, and his name. If someone accused you of something, would you not be like yelling out loud to say, I'm innocent, I did not do this? Or would people question it if you didn't? I don't know. You know what's the, the in-between? The, the, the problem is the practical effect of these allegations. What is the practical effect? The practical effect was that Donald Trump needed to broaden his tent and get suburban and college-educated women to go Trump. What happened with these allegations and with his nasty woman comment at the third debate was that I think suburban women said, you know something, that sounds like my husband when he was drunk or my boyfriend when he was abusive. It sounds like, you know, men, women, it it really, uh, it, it, it alienated the very 
constituency that he needed to broaden his base. He's been stuck in the high 30s, low 40s. Hillary Clinton has been in the high 40s. But what 40s. about depressing turnout for some of her supporters? I, I, I because her unfavorables are very high. People are sort of doing the hold their nose to vote for her. They both have high unfavorables. But he's got a message, and she's part of the Washington team that's been in. It's part of the let's drain the swamp. I, I, I fear that what this election has become is dissuading the other voter right. to vote for the other person. And as a result, I want to see what turnout is. Early voting, however, indicates that there is enthusiasm to cast a ballot. And I, I, I believe that the turnout will be at least average, probably above average, as it has been for the primaries. Donald Trump right. is that kind of lightning rod. We have to see if they're going to come out for her like they did for Obama, minorities and African Americans. That is going to be key. Geraldo, Latinos pleasure. Latinos especially. Yep. Exactly. Thank you. Governor Mike Huckabee is still on deck tonight. I'm going to be talking with him live. Plus, Lee Carter joins me with new polls showing close races. The fact is that this race is not over. Many in the media want to say it's over for the 12th time they're counting Donald Trump out. We know we can win this, and we are certainly not exceeding to the same chattering class that's been wrong about Donald Trump for about a year and a half. 16 days until the election and Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway pledging today on Fox that this race is far from over and she's even detailed the path to victory. So, are the mainstream media and the naysayers once again underestimating Donald Trump? Let's ask my all-star political panel, Republican strategist and Fox News contributor Tony Sayek and Democratic strategist Richard Fowler. So gentlemen, get your engine started. What do you think? Tony, I'll start with you. Um, Donald Trump, he's been the comeback kid several times. Can he do it again? We've got 16 days or so left. It's like T minus 16. What do you think? Yeah, the, uh, the underestimation of Donald Trump has been the main story of the 2016 presidential race. Also, the fact that he overperforms polls almost every single time, largely because, Kimberly, polls are not calibrated to really pick up what we know are Trump voters, people who are not habitually coming out to sure. the polls, number one. Number two, I do think there is an effect where people don't necessarily – be as bold about their support for Donald Trump in indicating that in polls versus what they are in reality. But what Kellyanne was talking about was the electoral map. Sure. And when you look at it, Ohio, Iowa, excellent early voting results for Donald Trump. He's still in fairly good shape in those states. Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, Colorado, New Hampshire, Maine, all states in which he's within the margin of error. Mm -hmm. So those are critical, obviously, to the electoral math to get to 270. But even a state like Michigan, for example, that she mentioned in her interview, he's within five or six points in a state like that where it's a big Democrat state. He's not spent a lot of time campaigning there. But that just shows you the macro dynamics of this race are for a change election that benefits an outsider. That's exactly where Trump is positioned. And how about hitting, you know, that message? That's the thing. Now, I'm going to bring you in here because Trump is trying to say drain the swamp, okay? Drain the swamp of people like Hillary Clinton, people that have been in D.C. doing the same thing with ineffective results year after year. Uh, is your side worried about that kind of messaging? Because it does seem like the outsiders were prevailing, especially with candidates like Bernie Sanders, and Trump is echoing some of those same sentiments. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Kimberly. Uh, it's good to be nice on with to you. See you. I, I it's good to see you, too. Um, but here's, there's a couple things here with the Trump campaign I think they're missing. So this argument about draining the swamp, there's no question that Washington's broken. I think that's both Democrats and Republicans agree. Washington is broken, but both parties are just as guilty for breaking it. Uh, my, uh, Donald Trump's running mate, Michael Pence, was bat in, the, in that building behind me was there for 12 years. And in 12 years, he didn't fix any of the problems that Donald Trump espoused and needs to be fixed. Um, but to sort of go against what Tony was saying, and, and I agree with Tony, and here's the thing, I think, you know, you have this LA tracking poll um, that we, we heard a lot through the show. I don't think that's a very good poll because they only, they're only talking to 400, the same 400 people over and over again. So those people are going to be more tuned into the media because they know that they're being polled. But if you look at the individual battleground states, the reason why it's very, very hard for the Trump campaign to pull this one off, as Karl Rove said this morning on Fox News Sunday, is because there's too many battleground states that they have to, there's too much territory they have to defend. Now Arizona's a toss-up. Utah is possibly a toss-up. Texas is too close to call. With all these states that Donald Trump's going to have to defend, there's no way he can hunker down and just stay in Ohio and just stay in Florida. The map is just too mm -hmm. big for him, which is what makes this race so problematic for the Trumpster. 
I, I would be delighted if Hillary Clinton spent the next two weeks going to Arizona and Texas and Georgia, <laughs> states she's frankly not she's, going to win. Have, but she doesn't have well, to, Tony. Listen, and Richard, you're, you're not wrong to suggest that clearly the map is broad for Donald Trump, but his power to get the attention, the fact that he doesn't need the resources she needs to even penetrate. She has spent $66 million in TV ads alone in September. She's still under 50% in every national poll, in every battleground state. That makes it fertile terrain for Donald Trump to really go in there and hone his message and pick up those type of votes, Richard. And the reality yeah. is, in, in the close of this campaign, and you're absolutely right when you say that this problem of the establishment is not just for Democrats, it's for Republicans too. But guess what Donald Trump has done? He's positioned himself very appropriately as the nonpartisan option to do reform, to change this well, entire system, well, hold, hold and not second, be beholden to partisan special hold elite on, hold interests. On, hold on. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Washington's broken. But we already know that Donald Trump's plan to quote unquote fixing Washington's just not going to work. Mark Zandi How do we know said that? himself. I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you. Don't I appreciate worry. that. Uh, Mark Zandi, who's a famous economist, has said that Donald Trump's plan for the economy would harpoon this economy and create a deeper recession than we saw in 2008. I'm not saying that. Hillary Clinton's not saying that. Mark Zandi, as well as Romney's old economist, is saying that. That's number one. Number two, let's take a look at this map. Hillary doesn't have to go to Arizona, right? She sent Michelle Obama to Arizona, Bernie Sanders in Arizona over the weekend. I, I'm pretty, I, I want to say this week, Elizabeth Warren is going to Arizona, where Hillary's going to spend her time in, in making sure that she maintains the firewall that she needs to get to 270. Robbie Mook said on Fox News Sunday earlier today that we're worried about getting to 270. And if you look at the map, if you look at the polling, if you talk to all the pollsters, all the data geeks in the world, they will all tell you that this map favors Hillary Clinton. And yeah, the that's reason not why, news, Richard. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. And the reason why this map favors Hillary Clinton is not because Donald Trump is necessarily missing in message, but he gave a, the, the, the latter half of his speech um, yesterday at Gettysburg was great. The too bad he spent the first 15 minutes of it bringing up old news and old things and doubling down on a well, strategy he, that poll after poll shows does not work to get to the American people. It certainly, doesn't get to women. It doesn't get to college educated voters. It's who he needs to win this election. R Richard, it's, it's... There it is there. It's always sort of favored the Democrats, it, it, so it's a that, problem but the way it's set up. That's the point, Kimberly. I mean, it's not breaking news to say the map favors Hillary Clinton. It favors every Democrat. The difference in this race is the fact that Donald Trump has put into play the upper Midwest, Rust Belt states like Michigan, like Wisconsin, and like Iowa, which are not traditionally favorable toward Republicans. Very true. And if you look very at the true. fact that in his third debate performance, mm -hmm. I actually think it was very smart. His message and his pitch wasn't just to Republican voters. It was a lot to those broader, Reagan Democrat yeah. voters who truly feel left out of the economy that has been created under eight years, which is a government-centered, controlled economy, bad trade deals, no manufacturing growth, yeah. no wage growth. These voters well, Tony, understand I, that Donald Trump I, is the I, only one who has their back. No, I agree that the, the, I agree that we have the, 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 the working families have been left out of this equation for far too long in Washington. But people just do not believe that Donald Trump is the candidate that's going to make that happen. And this is how you know this is this is how you know this this is a reality, Kimberly. Well, yeah. it's because you have to look at the Quick down reality, ballot races. <laughs> you have to look at the down ballot races. So in a race like a Kelly Ayotte's race in New Hampshire, where you would think she would mm -hmm. win with flying colors. She'll win. She was down six. The Missouri, uh, Roy see. Blunt, is uh, mm -hmm. is in a tie, a dead heat because Donald Trump is so toxic at the top. Right. Politics, that it's seeping into the water. All right, boys. No, I, mean, I know, could, I, know I love you, but I gotta leave you. <laughs> Tony Sayek and Richard Fowler, both high-energy Fox News contributors. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks, All Thanks, right, Kimberly. and Lee Carter is still ahead. We're going to be talking Trump's contract with America. We're going to check out some new swing state polls. But next, Governor Mike Huckabee is standing by. I want his take on Donald Trump's first 100 days pledge and how realistic he thinks a Trump path to victory really is. Don't go away. America's News Headquarters, I'm Kelly Wright. Good evening. A horrific crash on a highway in Southern California leaves 13 people dead and 31 more injured. It happened when a tour bus collided with a big rig truck. It's unclear what caused the wreck or if drugs or alcohol were involved. The bus was apparently going so fast that much of the truck's trailer pierced through it. The bus driver was among those killed in that crash. And Kurdish forces are closing in on Mosul as the operation to retake Iraq's second largest city 
from ISIS continues. They're now just nearly six miles outside of Mosul. Earlier this week, ISIS fighters staged an attack some 200 miles west of the city as an apparent diversion, but still, Kurdish forces were able to corner off key villages and a large stretch of road today. I'm Kelly Wright. Now back to Justice with Judge Janine with Kimberly Guilfoyle tonight. Welcome back to Justice. Donald Trump with a major policy speech this weekend talking about what he pledges to do in his first 100 days as president. My next guest knows what it takes not only to run a state, but also to run for president. Fox News contributor and former Arkansas governor Mike Huckabee joins me now from Florida. What a pleasure, Governor, to have you on. Thanks for being here tonight on Justice. Thank you. Glad right. to be here, Kimberly. So big, big speech. Um, this is something I know that really resonated with people before when Newt Gingrich had done this type of thing with a contract with America. Powerful speech hitting a lot of points, um, many of them the same points that you've made when you were running for president as well. How did you feel about it, and do you think it's going to work and connect with the people? Well, it was very substantive. And when he talks about things like term limits, I mean, that resonates with people. There are none of us who really believe that people going to Washington ought to make it a career. Washington has become the Roach Motel. <laughs> people go in, but they never come out. And that's not the way the founders envisioned this country. Uh, when he talks about uh, stopping this revolving door of going from government service into the big bucks of lobbying, again, people connect to that. They know that there are two sets of rules for the people in power and the people out here who are getting gut punched. So I think Donald Trump had a terrific message. I do think he made a tactical error by talking about the lawsuits because that's all the press want to talk about. And they're missing a very, very powerful and substantive reform message that he presented at Gettysburg. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting point you bring up, you know, and, and a fair one is that he's got this powerful message, this contract with America. You don't even want to give the mainstream media, the networks that have it in the bag for Hillary Clinton, a chance to pull a different lead out from that speech and then instead go with more of this, oh, the accusers and now Trump is going to sue them because you want to focus on these incredible policy points, like you said, about term limits, accountability, hitting all those things about get rid of the corruption in in Washington that the system is rigged and talk about jobs and talk about how Obamacare doesn't work and how he's going to repeal it. The things that are actually a specific list that you know as a governor that people need to pay attention to that would actually work and make a difference. Well, and he did do one thing right. I, I think that he just gave too many details. But if you give the press an option between a negative and a positive message, they're always going to take the negative message right. if you're a conservative. That's I mean, a that's just a given. Mm -hmm. But the one thing he did do very well when he said, look, they're coming after me, but I've got the resources to fight it. But most people in America don't have the resources to fight the government and the media. And that's who I've got to stand for. That was, to me, the highlight of the whole speech, even better than the reform messages. The only thing I wish he'd have done is simply say, as you know, there are a lot of people from the media and other places coming after me, and then go to that transitional message because, boy, the power punch of just reminding people that he's fighting for them. And yes, he's got the resources that he can take on those uh, you know, big entities, yeah. but most Americans don't, and they're getting run over. And that's what they want to champion for, for them. And Donald Trump represents that. You know, Governor, it really is a, a biblical message, the David and uh, Goliath, that he's willing to stand yeah. and fight against all of these interests that are united together. That makes sense to people. And they say, that's the person I want to be with, someone who's not afraid, yes, to stand up for themselves and to stand up for us, the American people, so that this election isn't taken away. What is your message tonight to Donald Trump and to the campaign about what they need to do in these precious last 16 days? Close the deal. There's nobody better to do it than Donald Trump. Think about how many deals he has closed. Real estate deals by the thousands. And what did he do to close them? He reminded people of why they wanted to buy the property. So he didn't focus on anything that was negative. He focused on, you need this property. I've got a good price for this property. Donald Trump knows how to close it. And what he's got to do in these next few days is think of this as closing the deal and do it like he's done it a thousand times before and he's done it successfully. He can do this. And Kimberly, I know that I'm kind of in a minority out here in the world of the media. 
I believe Donald Trump is still going to win. And I really believe that. And part of the reason I do is because there's so many people who are for Donald Trump, but they don't have the courage to say it by putting a yard sign up or answering a poll question because they don't want to be called a racist or a bigot or a xenophobe. And that's what the media will do to them. And their house will get egged mm -hmm. and their car's windows yeah. will be broken. But by gosh, when they get in that voting booth, they're going to vote for Donald Trump because the option is horrific. All right. Well, Governor Mike Huckabee, it was a pleasure to have you. Take care this evening. God bless. And next, Thank Lee you, Carter Kimberly. joins me live here in New York as we take a closer look at the states that could decide this historic election. Just over two weeks away now, justice is back in a moment. Sirius XM, your favorite shows on channel 114, plus every story, every 15 minutes, Fox News headlines 24-7, channel 115. The countdown to Election Day is on and the battle for the swing states is heating up. Let's break it all down with pollster and political partner... Pollster and political partner, Greg Kimberly, <laughs> at Ms. Lansky and partners Lee Carter. Okay, so a lot for us to go through tonight. Yes. Um, so people are saying, hey, they're looking at certain polls, they're looking at ABC, they're seeing dire results if you're a Trump supporter, yeah. you know, the land of free and plenty if you're a Hillary Clinton supporter. Yeah. H how do you see it in terms of how people should view these polls and what trends are you seeing now that are important to pay attention to? So I would say to everybody, drop the high and the low polls, ignore them because they're aberrations. What we're seeing right now for the most part is that there's about a five-point gap. And I think that's good news for Trump supporters because he has outperformed telephone polls throughout the whole process mm -hmm. by between five and six points. I would say we're really at a dead heat. So I would say we really need to look at Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania. He's not doing very well in Pennsylvania. Florida, it doesn't look great, but he's still at a three-point gap there. And I think he can take it. And there's a couple of reasons why. The polls that we're looking at right now, number one, are of likely voters. That means those are people who have voted before. Mm -hmm. We know that Donald Trump is bringing out record numbers of people who haven't voted in 12, 16, 20 years. We also see that there's a lot of people registering to vote for the first time, and that is going to break in, in favor of Donald Trump. And I also think that telephone polls don't play to Donald Trump at all. So and why is that? I think it's because most people aren't having the same conversations they are out loud with strangers than they are at their table at home. I think people are there's there's almost been a shame to put on a Donald Trump supporter publicly and so I think people are really having a hard time saying it out loud and I also think there's a lot of people wrestling with a decision quite frankly I know in my family there's a lot of people who are traditional conservative Republicans sure. and they're saying he's not what I want but I can't go the other way so I'm wrestling with it so we're still undecided but at the end of the day they're going to vote for Donald Trump I think that the news is not dire and I really think that people need to start looking at things differently I still think there's hope and I think that for everybody out there who wants Donald Trump to, to win, you need to share his message because his message isn't getting out in the mainstream media. Yesterday, he delivered an amazing speech, a 100-day plan. It was exactly what people want to hear, and what everybody's talking about was the statement that he made about um, suing those women rather than talking about what did he say he was going to do. He said he was going to do some very, very important things, and these are things that are important to most Americans. One, he said he's going to go down day one, and he's going to shake things up in Washington, D.C. He says it's corrupt down there, and he's going to fix it. People want to hear that message. Number two, he talked about national security. That is something that is so critical for folks. People are tired of hearing about terrorism and ISIS and all of these things. They want to feel safe in their neighborhoods and at home again. And he promised that. He also talked about his pledge to the American workers, to jobs and the economy. And those three messages are messages that need to get out and be repeated over and over again. And so as advocates for Donald Trump, people could be sharing those messages and I think it's going to have a big, big impact. Because most people and most voters that I've spoken to, even Hillary Clinton's supporters cannot tell you what she's going to do. And, and perhaps even they can't even say why they want to vote for her or support her. And you brought up something very interesting because consistently throughout the primary and now this general election process, in the exit polling that we saw, always it was Donald Trump very strong, stronger than Hillary Clinton on the economy, jobs that people trusted him to do the job and get jobs going and get infrastructure back in business in, in the country. And so that's something I think that's important that people care about. And 
and women care about. They want jobs, they want food on the table, and to take care of their families. Absolutely. And I think that when we're t- looking at and saying it's, that women are just going to vote for Hillary Clinton because they're women and because of traditional women's issues, absolutely not. Women are most concerned about the economy, jobs, and national security even more so absolutely. than other. And I think he. They want to be safe here at home. And mm-hmm. he wins on those messages when he stays on message. So he's sure. got 16 days left. He needs to pound these messages and he needs to stay focused and do what he's done before and come back. Well, let's see what happens. Lee Carter, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And next, the historic event that is Hillary Clinton celebrating and has nothing to do with the election. Back in a moment. Stay with us. Let's see what's going to happen there. That is it for us tonight. It sure has been a pleasure. Thanks so much for watching. And please, don't forget to watch me tomorrow on the whole crew on the 5, 5 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to have all the very latest news from the campaign trail. Have a great night from New York City.